Good morning, friends at the Blue Water Rest Home. I'm coming to you today from my home office here in Welland, Ontario, in the Niagara Peninsula. And as I'm recording this, it's it's a beautiful sunny day out. The sun is starting to feel warm on our skin, and it's a reminder to us that that spring's around the corner. That there's hope that someday soon the snow will be gone, and the flowers will be coming out, and we'll be moving into this this new season of spring, which I look forward to. We're also about to enter into the season of Lent, which also gives us hope, reminds of the hope that we that we have in Jesus. In fact, Wednesday is, is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of this, this season of Lent. I want to reflect today on this idea of the passion of the Christ. I, I have to admit to you that I, I've, it's a phrase that I've not thought an awful lot about until recently. I mean, what does it even mean, the passion of, of Christ, as we reflect on uh, on the death, uh, what Jesus went through leading up to the cross, and ultimately his crucifixion and, and resurrection, and we talk about his passion on the way to the cross. And that's what I want to reflect on a little bit together today. But before I do, let's just take a minute and pray. God, we thank you for this weather. We thank you for technology that we can uh, think about things, that we can talk together. And God, I thank you that that even though we are not together in person, well, we can share our hearts and share our thoughts. And so God, I pray blessing on the folks that are listening to this now, and, and that as, as they listen, and as I share some of the thoughts that I, I think you have given to me, I pray that you, Holy Spirit, would be our teacher today, and our encourager, and the one who leads us forward in triumphal entry into your presence. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to think about today as we look at this idea of the Passion of the Christ of Isaiah 53. And I'm just going to read that that section, the whole chapter really. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering, familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took our pain. He bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he didn't open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And he has suffered For after he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many. He will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured his life out unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The road to the cross 
and, and the suffering that Jesus went through, that he endured for you and for me. That's what the passion of Christ is all about. He walked that road. He suffered the humiliation. He endured the beatings, the pain, and finally that, that horrible death on the cross. He did it not because he deserved it, not because he had it coming to him, but because we did, you and I did. And he loved us so much that he took that upon himself rather than have us have to pay for it ourselves. If that isn't passion, I don't know what is. He was so passionate about us. That's how much Jesus loves us. That he did all these things, that he suffered all these things because of his incredible, passionate love for you and I. As I reflect on this, I wonder whether we haven't maybe spent a little too much time on the, the cute little Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so kind of mindset held on to that a little bit too tightly. I mean, it's true. He, he does love us, and it's a great song, a great message to, to teach our children. But it's more than that. It's a deep, passionate love that, that was willing to suffer. And it's while it's a good thing for us to teach our children and talk to them about, it's really spiritual milk. But the meat and potatoes of the truth is that Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to suffer, that he was willing to endure the cross. He was willing to, to, to face the, the beatings and the suffering and the mockery. He was willing to walk that road because of his incredible, passionate love for us, his fierce love, his passionate love. His love for us is so strong that that it endured anything that came its way on the cross. Even being willing to go to the point of having our sin laid on him and having a separation from God the Father that, that he had never experienced before. Even that he was willing to do. And you know, as I think about those things, the, 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 the idea of Jesus for the very first time in his life experiencing the weight of sin, and experiencing a, a separation between him and his father, for Jesus, those were probably more painful things than all the beatings, the nails through his hands and feet, and the suffering on the cross. In the passage from Matthew that, that describes Jesus, it talks about the bruised reed and the smoldering wick. And that comes to mind when I think about this. The suffering servant, the Messiah, was the kind of servant who was humble and gentle. He's not the type that looks at a, a bruised reed and, and sees it damaged and says, well, that's useless and just breaks it off. He's not the kind of servant that comes along and, and sees a candle that's just barely holding onto its flame and saying, well, that's no good, and, and extinguishes it, blows it out. And yet those very things were done to him. A bruised reed he will not break. Jesus was both bruised and broken. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. And yet Jesus' own life, his own light, was snuffed out. Is it possible that Jesus' death and resurrection did more than just made it possible for us to go to heaven? when we die, as important as that is. Do we sometimes focus too much on that, even though it's incredibly important and it's incredibly true? I think we sometimes focus too much on that and forget the fact that Jesus not only died for our life after this life is over, but he died to give us life and full life right now. He died for more than just giving us eternal life after this is over, but abundant and full life today, now. He died for our future, but also for our present. And so if you and I go through our lives knowing that our, our futures are secure, but then trying to, to live this day and each day in our own power, 
then we're missing something. Jesus did die for our future. He did die for our eternal souls, but he died so that we could live in joy and in peace and in victory today. That's also why he suffered that passion, why he endured all that difficulty. Because we know that, that as we live and, and follow Jesus, we know that challenges and difficulties come our way. We know that life is hard. We know there's times when we will make wrong decisions. We'll hold wrong attitudes in our hearts. And we need one to help us. We need Jesus to not only forgive our sin, but also to help us in the difficulty. Not just down the road when this life on earth is over, but we need Jesus now, today, and every day. It's at those times where, where we are the bruised reed, where the winds are blowing and we feel like we're, we're at the end of our ropes, where we can't do any more. It's when we're like those, that candle that's just barely holding onto its flame and the, and the wind is blowing and, and feels like trying to extinguish our life and snuff us out, that Jesus comes along and helps us, strengthens us, fuels our light. Because Jesus was broken so that we don't have to be. Jesus' light was extinguished so that our light doesn't have to be. That's why he suffered. That's why he endured the cross. That's why he endured the suffering. He wants to do that for us. He died to do that for us. He loves us with such a passion and a fierceness that he was willing to endure that difficulty. He was willing to endure that torture. Not for himself, not because he needed it, but because you and I need it. I think that we can go through life with a kind of a value on our independence and our own ability to get through life. And what that does actually is, is prevents us from experiencing the help that, that God wants us to have. It prevents us from experiencing what it is that Jesus has for us, part of the gift of Jesus. When we try and do it ourselves, when we try and do it in our own strength, we miss out on the gift of Jesus that he suffered for, that he, he paid the price for, because he loves us. Like many of the songs that we sing, focus on, on the, the saving power of Jesus for the life to come. And, and let's never lose that. Jesus did die and did provide us the way to be saved for, for the life that is after this one. But let's also focus on the fact that Jesus died for us now, for here, for today, and for every day. There's a little story I heard some time back about a woman who visited church one Easter Sunday. And she wasn't in the habit of, of going to church, but just decided to go that Sunday and didn't know anybody in that church and she went to the service and and participated and, and as she was leaving the pastor as they sometimes do go to the back door and was was greeting people and this woman uh, as she was exiting the building came to the pastor and, and and shook his hand and and said I've never seen such a crowd in church before well, the minister didn't really know her but she was clearly impressed by the number of people that were there for for Easter worship but then she said one more thing as she was finishing shaking his hand and beginning to move out the door. She said, do you suppose it'll make any difference? Well, the minister stopped her for a minute and said, what do you mean? Will what make any difference? Easter, she said. Will Easter make any difference for all these people? Or will life tomorrow be the same as it was yesterday? That story is a little reminder to me that, that Jesus did come to make a difference in our lives. Today, tomorrow, the day after that. Jesus didn't just 
come. He didn't just suffer. He didn't just go through that passion for this life after this after the life after this one is over. But he came for us today. And so will we seek Jesus today for what we need? Will we receive from him the gift that he has for us today? Accept his help. Accept his peace. Live in his joy. Because that is why Jesus came for us. I wish you God's blessing as you move into this, this Easter season. May, may God teach you new things. I pray that we have open hearts to receive what it is that God has for us. As a pastor, I often find that it's it's difficult to uh, to speak and to preach during seasons like Christmas and Easter because, you know, it's always the same passages that we use. And it's hard to, to try and figure out how to say a new thing or reveal something new with the same stories and the same passages. But I, I find that as, as we do that and as we just open our hearts, that God shows us new things. He reveals new aspects. He teaches us new things by his Holy Spirit. And so I pray that as we go into this Easter season, this Lent season, that he will teach you new things as well. I just want to close our time together by just offering a prayer again for your prayer of blessing for today, for the days to come, and through this Easter and Lent season. Lord God, I pray blessing on the people at the Blue Water Rest Home, the ones who are listening to this message. God, I pray that you would bless them in their life. And God, I pray that you would make them a blessing to those around them. God, I'm sure there's many needs. There's probably needs for, for physical healing, as physical suffering sometimes comes to us. I'm sure there's sadness and brokenness over, over difficult situations. God, I pray that you would bless these folks and be with them in those places. You know what they are. And thank you that you say in your word that even before the words come out of our mouths, our spirit's communing with your Holy Spirit and already knows what those requests are. Even if the, the words fail us and we don't even have the words to say as we pray, just our, our groanings, the spirit interprets those things and, and those are prayers. So God, I pray that you would meet these folks in that place. And God, I pray as well that, that you would teach all of us as we go through this, this Easter and Lent season. Reveal to us new things about Jesus. Impress upon us again and anew how much, God, you love us and how much, Jesus, you love us and how that was shown through the Passion. As we read the stories, the stories of of Jesus moving towards the cross, walking down that road to Jerusalem, towards that suffering, towards that cross. God, help us to be just, just taken captive anew in our minds by how much you love us. And God, help us to give ourselves to you in return. Help us to give our lives as, as a an offering to you, a pleasing offering. So God, bless these friends, these dear ones that you love, and lead them into the season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you today, friends, and bless you in this season that's coming.